Welcome back, 3D printing and CAD design enthusiasts. Uh, this is going to be part two of a Tinkercad tutorial. My name's Eddie. I'm a 3D printing professional, and I'm here to get you well on your way to being a skilled designer, uh, starting with Tinkercad. So let's jump right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about shape manipulation and the many ways to do it. Now, you may have noticed in the previous video, or if you're just playing around on Tinkercad, that when you click on a certain object, you see this panel pop up. It's a shape manipulation panel uh, with a lot of options. We're gonna cover what every single one of these do uh, right this very moment. So before I even start that, I wanna mention that the best practice of manipulating shapes, as you could see right here, you can drag and manipulate shapes this way, or you can manipulate shapes this way, which I'll show in a second. But the best practice way to do it is to always start with the shape manipulation tool up here and then later on if you wish and desire to to switch it up over here so let's start a shape from scratch and see what happens i'm going to click and drag out this box over here and we're going to start manipulating it so once i drag it out you see this panel comes up so what this panel does right next to shape there's a down arrow key if you click it it simply hides the panel if you click it it opens the panel you can lock editing you can also achieve this with control L what this does is let's say you manipulated your shape and you no longer want anyone or yourself to be able to manipulate it you click on this or click control L and it is now locked you see that you can't even move it. Uh, it's completely locked in place, the design and the placement. So let's unlock that. And there's also something called uh, hiding an object. So if you click it, the object gets completely hidden. Now, you're probably wondering why do you need that? Because when you're well into designing and you have tons of objects over here on your work plane, it could become cluttered. And so periodically, you wanna hide objects. You could better work uh, in a more convenient fashion. And to unhide it, you simply click uh, this light bulb and it will unhide it. If you wanna know the keyboard shortcut keys, they are Control H to hide. And to unhide, I believe it's Control Shift H. Yes, so Control Shift H to unhide, Control H to hide. And all of these keyboard shortcuts you can find, uh, I made a place on the website, it's promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad. And you'll be able to find all these tutorials as well as all the keyboard shortcuts. Let's jump right into discussing what all these features control. So if we have our box, uh, what we can do is if we click on solid, it will bring up a whole host of options. But let's zoom in on the box, which we can achieve by either pressing the F key or going to fit view to selection over here on the left side. So if we click fit view to selection, we now see our box. If we click solid, you can go to the presets and you could choose any which color you please. Um, and then after that, you can go and actually punch in your own custom color or you can play around with the color wheel. So if you rotate around, it'll give you the different colors. And in the center is the br how bright or dark you want that color to be. Uh, and you can essentially, just with these two tools here, create any color you want. Uh, there's also a hex number here, so if you know the number of a particular color, uh, feel free to punch it in here. Um, one way to find out uh, what the number is to all the colors is uh, this color pick eyedropper that is basically an extension to Google Chrome. Uh, feel free to Google it, color pick eyedropper. If you click it, you can essentially choose any color on your screen. So let's say like this one here, and I could take this and I could copy this code and then X out of the tool. And then if I go back in, I can go to hex number and I could punch in that number there and it'll now be the same color as this sphere. Now remember when you go to 3D print, it's likely not gonna be these colors. You have to set that up on your 3D printer. The nice thing is we can also make this transparent. Um, by going to solid and hitting transparent. This is very helpful, especially if you have objects behind the object that you're working on, because you could still clearly see the cube 
and you could see all the different shapes and everything else behind it, which is really, really neat. And lastly, you have something here called multicolor. Now, multicolor is not available at the moment because we don't have another shape next to it. But let's say we bring this roof over and now the roof is over next to the uh, cube. Uh, we'll cover how to group later, but just for the purpose of multicolor, I'm going to group these and now it's essentially one object. However, if I go to solid and I click multicolor, you can now choose designated colors for each. So it's uh, it's definitely very helpful, but let's jump back in and don't worry if you don't understand how to group objects and ungroup objects. We'll jump into that in a different tutorial. So the options in this region are going to change from shape to shape and I will show you what I mean in a second by dragging out another shape and showing that it's different. But let's cover it bottom to up. So first we're looking at the height. We can easily adjust the height of the object. Let's zoom out a little. And we can easily adjust the height and we can be very precise by basically just changing this value here. So let's say 30 and it will be exactly 30 millimeters tall. The width works the same way. So this is changing the width. Now notice it's changing it from the center and the length. It also changes it from the center and we can be precise. So let's just keep it a perfectly um, a perfect cube. So we'll make it 30 and we'll make the width 30 as well. Now they have something called radius here and what radius is, is it's basically going to smooth out the edges. And it's very easy if you're not sure what certain things do. You can simply start doing it and you'll be able to tell exactly what each of these function does. So what steps actually are, is it's dictating the points where the angles change and how many of them are there. So you can think of it as almost like steps. Uh, how many steps to the radius curve are there? And we see that if we leave it at six and seven, we can kind of tell there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas where the angle changes. If we want to smooth it out, we simply increase it. If we want it to be more jagged, we decrease it. And you can get some nifty shapes by just manipulating the radius and steps. And what I meant by there being different options is if we go ahead and we delete this and we bring up another shape. And uh, so the shapes, you simply can scroll down and you'll see all the different shapes. And you can choose from a whole myriad of options, from text and numbers to characters. They work similarly, but we'll get into these a little bit later. It's a little bit more advanced. Let's stick to basic shapes and let's pull up a tube. Now we'll drag it over here. And now you see that we have uh, different options than we did for the cube because it's a different shape. So for the radius, we c if you change the radius, the radius of the inner circle changes. Uh, if we change the wall thickness, the thickness of the actual wall changes. And we can actually manipulate <clears throat> how many sides we want this to have. So if we just have three, it's a triangle. This is a pentagon. If we have eight, octagon, nanagon, decagon, and so on and so forth. And if we have a lot, it kind of smooths out and becomes a tube. Bevel is similar to the cube, the way we could smooth out the edges. So right now it's sharp, but we could bevel them. And the bevel segments, it's very similar again to the cube where it dictates how many points of changes in the angle there are. And we can see it better if we're looking from the side. Uh, and we could definitely tell that this dictates the amount of sharp angle changes there are. Now, we're going to get to hole later, but essentially you can turn this into a hole and cut away from different objects. So just to very briefly illustrate, and again, we're going to get into to all this later, but if one object is a hole and the other is a solid and we select both of them and group them together, it will actually eat away at the other object. Uh, we're going to get into it later. I just, I promised that I would show you what this panel dictates and hole is a part of it. So let's backtrack by going to control Z, control Z, control Z. And let's continue with the tutorial. So if we remove this, 
and we bring back the square again, I'm going to show you various ways to manipulate it aside from using the manipulation panel. So again, I want to mention, uh, you definitely want to start by manipulating it here, because later on when we manipulate, uh, and we change the size and the attributes of the shape, this will not function the way you want it to. Uh, it's a small glitch and it's difficult for Tinkercad to keep track of what we're custom doing, uh, which we'll cover right now actually. So the next thing I wanna cover is when we click on any one of these points, now you'll notice there's black points and there's white points. And there's a reason for this, there's a distinction. If you click and drag a white point, you're able to change the object in two different ways. So right now it's going forward and backwards and side to side. Whereas if you click on a black dot, it can only designate the change in one direction. And this is, this is important, especially when you get to play around with complex shapes. Uh, if you want to make it taller or shorter, you can tweak it this way. Also keep in mind, every time you're making changes and you see numbers, you can simply click on the number and input any variable, any numerical number that you wish, and it will turn into that number. So if we make it 10, it will become much shorter and it'll be surgically precise. Same thing when we're manipulating this, we can simply go to these numbers and switch them up as we please, which is awesome. Uh, Tinkercad is a very, very powerful and surgical tool, especially one that's just free to the public and free to everyone. I think it's, it's kind of awesome. Um, so once we're able to do that, I want to discuss how to change the size of an object using some shortcut keys. So if we click, if we hold down Alt, and at the same time, we click and drag the side of a handle, we will see that the shape is being modified from the center. So it's easier if we look at it from this dot and we click Alt, it's being changed from the center. If I release Alt and I try to change it, now it's just changing it from one side. And this can clear up a lot of confusion when you're trying to manipulate it on your own. Now if you Alt and click a corner um, a white dot, it will again in multiple directions change the shape, but it will do it from the center. Whereas if you just do it, it will change it from uh, that side that you're clicking on. Now there's a way to uniform scale this shape. So if you want the ratio of all these sides of this shape to be uniform when you scale, then you have to press shift, shift, hold down shift, and try to scale anything yourself, and the all of the other sides will scale in proportion to any side that you're scaling. And the same should hold true if you're just, regardless whether you're clicking the black or the white dots, it will scale proportionally. And lastly, there's a way to do uniform scale from the center, which is alt, shift, and click, and now it basically locks it to the center and it shifts all the sides proportionally from the center. And with that, we learned how to manipulate all the sides using the black and the white dots and, and these features. Remember this one here, the cone is to move it up and down, which can also be achieved by holding down control and pressing up or down on your keypad. One more thing to cover in this tutorial that will get you well on your way to mastering Tinkercad is the rotating feature. Now to rotate any shape, if you click on the shape, you're gonna see these semicircle with arrow signs. These are the rotation gauges. So if we click on any of them, you have to hold and start rotating. Now this is very important. As you see right now, there's a red shade that's on the outer side of the circle and we're essentially moving it by about one degree each and every way that we move. If we shift our mouse on the inside, we're now going to notice that we're moving uh, every 22 and a half degrees, which is essentially, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one sixteenth of a full circle. 
we start moving. So if we rotate around that way, now there's another shortcut. If we hold down shift and we click on the rotating icon, we're gonna be able to rotate at 45 degree angles. So if you wanna do a basic rotate, like rotate it once to the left, to the right, or rotate it 180 degrees, it's very easy to do so with that shortcut. Also, you can simply click, and as you start rotating, you can just go and change the degree. So if we click on the degree, we can actually make it 20 degrees. And if we don't like 20, we can make it 40. Now, as you'll notice, we've been rotating on the work plane itself, but we can rotate in either um, in other directions as well. So we can start rotating it on this plane. And as we rotate on this plane, you'll notice that the shape is now looking a little more complex than it used to. Um, one thing to point out is later on, if we go to the shape, the size and the width uh, don't necessarily reflect this, the length and width of this shape anymore. So for instance, if I click here, it says 31.3 and 24 and a half. This is actually not 31.3 and 24 and a half. It's showing how wide this box is and how much space this particular shape is taking up in the actual box itself. So it's something to keep in mind and that's one of the reasons why I mentioned that first you should change, you should make all the changes here and then start manipulating it here because uh, you can get lost. Once you start tweaking the height, you're no longer um, able to tell which was the width, which was the length, which was the height because we had it rotated. So always best practice, tweak this and then start tweaking it manually here. Uh, I hope this helped answer some questions and want to show you something cool right before we go. Let's check out this scribble uh, feature. So if we bring a scribble onto the work plane, you'll notice that this screen pops up. And what this is, is you can draw virtually anything that you want to here. So for instance, let's draw a thumbs up because that's what I want you guys to do is to like this video at the end of it. So let's say we did this and we tried to color it in, okay? If we click done, and you can actually see your preview here, and what's nice is if you click done down here, and uh, keep in mind, you can also modify, uh, you can have an eraser tool, so you could erase a part of it that you're unhappy with, uh, there's a shape eraser tool, there's a shape tool, and essentially, and then there's the brush tool that you could tweak here. And once you click done, it'll actually turn into a shape. Now you'll notice here, the only options it gives you is the height. And that's the only thing that you could tweak. Uh, I'm sure it'll change in the future, but uh, that's what's nice to see is um, Tinkercad provides you with exactly how the program can tweak it and all the options that you have. So if you wanted to draw something, if you wanted to sign your name, you would simply use the scribble. And you can play around with this yourself by choosing any one of these shapes and seeing how they can be manipulated. So for instance, if we bring a diamond in, we're likely, oh, we actually don't see any choices for it, which, which is interesting. So we're only able to manipulate it here, but there's no choices to manipulate it there. Whereas if we bring in a heart, it'll probably give us some more options. Actually, it doesn't doesn't even do it for the heart uh, let's try it for this paraboloid so for the paraboloid it's only giving us the steps so we can have it be very rudimentary and sharp or we can have it be very very smooth and with that I believe we covered how to manipulate shapes uh, so I hope you learned something and if you did subscribe like the video I'm gonna try and put out more you're gonna impress all your friends you can be the cool kid at school that knows uh, Tinkercad or you're going to be well on your way to uh, mastering it and moving on to a more difficult program. Uh, if you're an adult and you're interested in 3D printing and all the different ways uh, you can profit from 3D printing and everything else, uh, definitely take a glance at my website, take a glance at my channel. There's some uh, pertinent videos there that will uh, answer some of those questions. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for a part three of the tutorial where we're going to get into all sorts of tools, solids, shapes, holes, and start creating.